birthday activity get out get out si puede aquí ya y ver si puede cancelar el arts class y puede jugar team jugar team just like last time y que no recuerdo fácil si que fue el arts class a tan y puede jugar team team one from CHS campus in this area you will pick up trash not for Gary Curranto no rabia va seti o a togo di split e va a rofot por ro Gary sago seta Gary sta pensando quando ti e a parte togo di seo Gary CPUC di un seferito pan set Kurang tiga kali kurang tu. Time, ek time, ek ada ek section. Puan me itu sense. Apa fikir ek section non area designated area apa fikir non. Twelve P, eleven T, eleven F, ten T, ten F, nine A, nine E, nine H. Unity 12P 11T 11F 10T 10F 9A 9E 9H IK IK sections ra assign yeri a area IKA team one since ra pa fiti kabi mustafs on team one teacher Titiara teacher China teacher Edgar teacher Aser Teacher Murai, Teacher Chulin, Teacher Sunny, Driver Abanto, Principal KS, Coach Tenants, Rod, Maintenance, Wilfun, Ma Office, Data Clerk, Secretary Tafaris. K, CHCV, Presence on Team 1. Team 2. Field. In Kay Abbey section 12A, 12E, 12F, 11A, 11C, 10A, 10C, 9P, 9T, 9F. No, we send there, he gets here to me. Staff. Sirira Neri, Teacher Kathleen, Teacher Novo, Teacher Modesto, Teacher Rolly, Teacher Xenia, Teacher Julia, Teacher Niona, Teacher Esther, Teacher Reza, Teacher Roxana, Teacher Wallace, Driver Douglas, Security Matt, Security Chayback, Driver Evanston, Driver Cass, Me Assistant Principal, Wapusi Sire. Ira Team Two, Team Three, from Kurasa all the way to Kuranto. Esa juega en Gopofetan, o no na casorro Gopofetan ni que quién haga. Y ve, K K section 12C, 12T, 11P, 11E, 10P, 10E, 9C and 9G. Sense. Me work group staff, teacher Adalbert, teacher Sitas, teacher Acera, teacher Akius, teacher Allen, teacher Allen, teacher Sitas, teacher Acera, teacher Akius, teacher Rinda, teacher Lisa, teacher Doralina, teacher Selfa, teacher Mackay, teacher Kenser, me driver Reiji. Security Conan, Maintenance Monty, the Driver Coach Marcel. Okay, George on Team Three. What to do? We separate the poor guy. We. Sipa George on Gary. Each student must at least one half one club. Me to be very, she be pick up trash. Me to be chin, and you be pick up piri. On Iran, she is gay. Just a good story. She is gay for our principal face. Now I just a good school. 
Hopefully, there is some time. You are ready for the real chair. Many times a birthday. A rare event. Very special for us. I would love my God. So we should push up for our noble spirits. For it, every member gets medicine. For poor people, gets food. For poor people, gets medicine. 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 For poor We can see our students so excited and again this is Earth Day, this is uh, Chuk High School. So this one, this group is uh, team three. So another students just arrived. I'll give you a little background about why we observe Earth Day. 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill main article 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill on January 28, 1969 a well called platform A drilled by Union Oil 6 miles 10 kilometers off the coast of Santa Barbara California blew out more than 3 million US gallons 2.5 million imperial gallons 11 million liters of oil spilled killing more than 10,000 seabirds dolphins seals and sea lions as a reaction to this disaster, activists were mobilized to create environmental regulation, environmental education, and Earth Day. Among the proponents of Earth Day were the people in the front lines of fighting this disaster, Selma Rubin, Mark McGuinness, and Bud Bottoms, founder of Get Oil Out. 15. Dennis Hayes, organizer of the first Earth Day, said that Senator Gaylord Nelson from Wisconsin was inspired to create Earth Day upon seeing an 800 square mile, 2100 can 2 oil slick from an airplane in the Santa Barbara Channel. 15. 16. Santa Barbara's Environmental Rights Day 1970 on the first anniversary of the oil blowout, January 28, 1970, Environmental Rights Day was created, and the Declaration of Environmental Rights was read. It had been written by Rod Nash during a boat trip across the Santa Barbara Channel while carrying a copy of Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence. 15. The organizers of Environmental Rights Day, led by Mark McGuinness, had been working closely over a period of several months with Congressman Pete McCloskey, RCA, to consult on the creation of the National Environmental Policy Act, the first of many new environmental protection laws sparked by the national outcry about the blowout oil spill and on the Declaration of Environmental Rights. 
both McCloskey, Earth Day co-chair with Senator Gaylord Nelson and Earth Day organizer Dennis Hayes, along with Senator Alan Cranston, Paul Ehrlich, David Brower and other prominent leaders, endorsed the declaration and spoke about it at the Environmental Rights Day Conference. According to Francis Sarwe, the conference was sort of like the baptism for the movement. According to Hayes, this was the first giant crowd he spoke to that felt passionately, I mean really passionately, about environmental issues. Hayes also thought the conference might be the beginning of a real movement. 15. Nash, Garrett Hardin, McGinnis and others went on to develop the first undergraduate environmental studies program of its kind at the University of California at Santa Barbara. 17. Earth Day 1970. President Richard Nixon and First Lady Pat Nixon planted a tree on the White House South Lawn to recognize the first Earth Day. The seeds that grew into the first Earth Day were planted by Wisconsin Senator Gaylord Nelson. An ardent conservationist and former two-term governor of Wisconsin, Nelson had long sought ways to increase the potency of the environment as a political issue. The extraordinary attention garnered by Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, the famous 1968 Earthrise NASA photograph of the Earth from the Moon, the saturation news coverage given to the Santa Barbara oil spill 18 and the Cuyahoga River catching fire in early 1969 19 led Nelson to think the time was ripe for an environmental initiative. As a result of interactions with his staff and with Fred Dutton, 20, a prominent Democratic operative who had been Robert Kennedy's presidential campaign manager, Nelson became convinced that environmental teachings on college campuses could serve as such a vehicle. 21. Teachings had been held on hundreds of college campuses to debate the war in Vietnam. They generally reflected the divide between those who thought of Vietnam as a bulwark to stop additional countries falling to communism like dominoes, versus those who believed that the war was the latest stage of a nationalist, anti-colonialist campaign, 22 by Vietnamese who had fought against China, then France, Japan, France again, and now the United States. These debates elevated arguments over the war in the public consciousness and enlisted a generation of student activists. Nelson asked public interest lawyer Anthony Royce Mann, 23, to establish a nonprofit, Environmental Teaching, Incorporated, to manage the campaign, and recruited a small board of directors. He asked Republican Congressman Pete McCloskey, 14, to co-chair the board to ensure it was bipartisan and bicameral. 15. On September 20, 1969, Senator Nelson first announced his plans for an environmental teaching in a little publicized talk at the University of Washington. I am convinced that the same concern the youth of this nation took in changing this nation's priorities on the war in Vietnam and on civil rights can be shown for the problem of the environment. That is why I plan to see to it that a national teaching is held. 16. Senator Nelson went on to encourage teachings at many more speeches. A November talk at Airlie House had a New York Times reporter in the audience. The resulting front-page article, 17, was a turning point. Letters of inquiry from across the country began to pour into Nelson's Senate office. The article piqued the interest of Dennis Hayes, then a graduate student at Harvard. Hayes traveled to Washington, D.C., and arranged a 10-minute visit with Senator Nelson, which stretched into two hours. 24. Hayes returned to Harvard with a charter to organize Boston. After a few days of reference checks, 25, he was asked to drop out of Harvard to become the executive director of the national campaign. 26. Because of the non-hierarchical tenor of the times, Hayes suggested that people be designated coordinators rather than directors. He became the national coordinator, 27, and he quickly hired various regional coordinators, a press coordinator, a K-12 coordinator, a volunteer coordinator, etc. At its peak, the national office had a few dozen paid staff, each earning a flat $375 a month, equivalent to $2,771 in 2021, plus more than 100 regular volunteers. As the talented regional coordinators fanned out across the country, however, they immediately encounter two problems. First, by 1970, the concept of teachings had become past. Moreover, teachings generally involved debates, and no one was pro-pollution. Second, and more troubling, leading activists on college campuses were deeply involved in the anti-war and civil rights movements. They tended to view the environment as a distraction. 26. The Earth Day name the solution to the first problem came from an unexpected direction. 
Shortly after the turn of the year, a quiet man named Julian Koenig stopped by the national offices and volunteered to help. Tony was a Madison Avenue giant. His campaign for Volkswagen, Think Small, was later cited by Advertising Age as the greatest advertising campaign of the 20th century. 28. Over coffee, Hayes confided that the Teachman moniker was not working and asked whether Koenig had any ideas. Koenig asked for a few days. A week later, he returned with an assortment of mock-ups for ads, laid out around the announcement of Ecology Day, Environment Day, Earth Day, and E-Day. Koenig said that his personal favorite was Earth Day, in part because April 22nd happened to be his birthday, and birthday rhymes with Earth Day. 29. Hayes immediately agreed. Koenig offered to prepare a fully refined ad. Hayes insisted that it include a small coupon soliciting funds for the threadbare operation. Koenig's ad was visually arresting, and perfectly summed up the issues and values, the feisty but welcoming tone that the campaign had adopted. Hayes loved it and decided to bet the farm. He committed about half of all the money in the campaign's bank account to buy a full page in the Sunday New York Times opinion section. 30. The ad was a huge success. Overnight, Earth Day became the almost universally used name for the upcoming event. The ad generated more than enough revenue to repay its cost, and thousands of potential organizers sent in their names and addresses along with their checks. In future months, magazines and alternative newspapers ran the ad for free, generating still more names and more financial support. The national office started using environmental action, rather than environmental teaching, on its letterhead and publications to promote Earth Day. 31. At this point, Hayes made a far-reaching decision. In those early days, it would have been easy to obtain trademark protection for Earth Day and force compliance with a set of standards by anyone using it. Hayes decided, however, that he wanted the name to be broadly used by anyone who planned to focus on environmental issues that spring. 32. Although Earth Day swiftly replaced environmental teaching, the second problem proved more complicated. College activists, for the most part, viewed anything other than ending the war as a distraction. A majority of the Earth Day staff had cut their teeth as organizers against the war and saw no conflict. The war appeared to be winding down, and they felt it was prudent to start paying attention to the far more profound changes needed to produce a healthy, sustainable America. But time was short, and college activists were not responding. Hayes spent a day reviewing the letters Senator Nelson had received, and discovered that very few were from college students. Most were from women who appeared to be college-educated homemakers who wanted to do something to improve the world for their children. Another large share was from K-12 teachers. Hayes decided to shift the campaign's focus from colleges and universities to community organizing. Building off the successful strategies of the anti-war movement and the civil rights movement, he decided to promote large urban rallies, focused on major environmental issues, while also encouraging environmental education at the K-12 level. Bryce Hamilton, who had been Midwest coordinator, was shifted to K-12 coordinator, and it proved to be a great choice. 33. Hamilton reached out to the National Education Association, American Federation of Teachers, and the National Science Teachers Association to enlist their members. He provided materials to thousands of educators who wrote to the group directly, and he distributed the most creative ideas he received from anyone to everyone else.